Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back, listeners, to the finest phototainment in the world. That's right, you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your photo hangover. Oh, we made Steven. it. We made it. We made it. Three, third we times a charm. Three. That's Nora's right. finally done crying. Oh, she for fell now. asleep at four this afternoon, and I knew it would not go well for us tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Charlie didn't nap at all, so there's that. Oh, so she's she's sound asleep now, I assume. Correct. Okay. Yes, very much so. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't try to get Nora to nap. She just did. Three-year-olds. Who wants them? Me. I want lots of them. They're so cute and adorable. You can tickle them all day. Mm. Mm-hmm. Until you need to do anything in the evening hours. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, obvious drawbacks. <laughs> obvious, is it? Mm. Worthwhile. Wasn't on the pamphlet. <laughs> Worthwhile trade-offs, I would say. Left that one off the brochure, if you know what I mean. Dustin, I want to tell you a story, buddy. I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me this weekend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dustin, I was at my my sister's house. And my mm-hmm. brother-in-law asked me if uh, he could get some help, you know, chainsawing some tree down, some trees, chainsawing some trees down. So, you know, I put my jeans on, put my flannel on, you know, lumberjacked up, went out there to help him. Did you put your, did you put your world-saving sunglasses on? I did, and because he didn't have any other <laughs> safety glasses, so I just wore my sunglasses. Nice. And I went out there to help him, and uh, there was a very weird experience for me, Dustin. Mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. as we're Go as on. we're cutting down these trees, you know, um, I was at one point holding a log in place while he was, you know, chainsawing it, and a bug flew out of the log, apparently. And apparently, what would, what, what, what would you know would happen with this bug? This bug flew out of the log, up into the air. And then alighted upon upon my back, specifically um down my back, specifically <laughs> down my butt crack, in, mm-hmm. in into my underwear. At which point I felt a very sharp burning sensation from my, oh my. nutsack. Oh my! Yeah, I have no idea what kind of bug this was, other than the kind that eats wood. Um, <laughs> it was like a weevil or a beetle or something. It was. It was, uh, ooh, it was not good, and uh, it took took me a second or two to realize this was not like some random wood chip that had gotten down there. This was something much worse, and uh, I got bit a few times, Dustin, on the nuts. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, oh well, my. I thought you would wow. enjoy that, that story. Yeah. Are there pictures? No. <laughs> P- pictures or it didn't happen? I would take some pictures, but I mean, it's... Man, for for listeners out there who've never seen a man's balls before, <laughs> it'd be really hard you to tell the difference between like a normal bump and a bump. You wouldn't know if there were bites or not bites. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Uh, I was mowing the lawn the other day and, you know, killed the bug, totally killed it. No longer a bug in my underwear, but still... Uh, while while mowing the lawn, get like phantom burning sensations down there because now I'm just scared. I'm scared. I never thought that was a possibility in my life that a bug could fly down there mm-hmm. and harm me in such a way <laughs> and and defile me. Yeah, yeah, molest no. me. It, it was it was not good. It was not good. Uh, but but we're okay now. You know, just yeah. just some ice on the balls and we're all good. <laughs> Shrivel them up. That you and Jennifer won't be having any more children. Well, so yeah. No, I am kind of concerned about that. Like, because the bug bit me, is it possible? Because there are some bugs that, like, you know, when they bite you, they put, like, bacteria or maybe, like, their DNA inside or you. Or superpowers. Yeah. So, like, yeah. if if Jen and I did have another kid, what are the power, what, what, what are the chances? It would have, like, mad weevil beetle wood-eating powers, you know? And, you know, it took a few times of me, like, stepping on this thing after it came out of my pants before it died. Can you walk us through how you removed the bug? Uh, I just, you know, went to the restroom. So you had the dropped, you had that dropped. sort of... 
Oh, I had that gait going to the restroom. Like I just got off of a horse that I'd been riding on for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. My brother-in-law was like, yeah, just drop try out here. It's all good. And I was like, in your backyard, you have neighbors. I will just continue to be bit. I will lose a testy. I will lose a testy before I drop trow for your neighbors. <laughs> I didn't want to give anybody a show. Some of the people got kids around there. You know, I've got kids myself. And, I... and those are the last few kids you'll have. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the bug basically gave me a vasectomy, I think. That's how it works, right? When you go to get a vasectomy, they just let they a just bug bite you. They just drop a beetle in your pants. <laughs> they say, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, right? Yeah. So that was my uh, Memorial Day weekend. How was yours, bud? Did you, did you shoot some weddings or what did you do? Uh, we shot a wedding. Um, our dog died. So that was a real, wow. a real downer on the weekend. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for that. That was a... That was, you know, I'm, I'm making this about me. I'm so sorry, buddy. That really sucks. Um, but it also sucks that you're dragging me down and all the listeners down. Wow. Well, I just thought it was an interesting thing because a it was unexpected uh b we had to make the decision to do it and c trying to plan your life around doing that is horrendous and horrific and i wish that upon no one mm-hmm. um that's not, i'm legitimately really sorry you had to do that are you okay bud uh there's good days and bad days um but yeah so we lost our dog of six years and um it was rough. It was rough. She had a stroke, and yeah, it was a, it was a bad week last week. So I'm really glad we recorded one ahead of time. Mm-hmm. But we are working through it every day. But yeah, we we had to shoot a wedding this weekend. Uh, despite that, uh, Corinne actually got super sick on Saturday, so we shot the wedding with her. Incredibly sick. Mm. So that was also a downer. Um, I tried to find a second shooter last minute. I knew you were already drunk probably by the time I was looking for someone. I was wide open. I, I would have come to help you. Wow. I know. I thought of you at the last minute and then I saw Jen's drunk selfie photo on Facebook later. I was like, well, I didn't want to ruin that fun. <sighs> was this on a, on Saturday? Yeah. When did she get sick? Like at halfway through the day? No, Saturday morning. Well, she was up all night throwing up, but didn't wake me up because she's a saint. And um, and then I woke up, got ready for the wedding as usual, and found out that she had been getting sick all night. And she had posted in some local photography groups looking for a replacement, and nobody was available. So... Obviously, uh, being a holiday weekend, being last minute, it was rather challenging and hopeful to try and find somebody. But it could have been done if you would have reached out to me. Just so we're all on the same page here, Stephen Elk would have saved your balls. Yeah. He couldn't save his own, but could have saved yours. Should have. Should have, could have. But she came. She worked. um, She worked out. It was great. She passed out during the ceremony, but other than that, she was fine passed out um, during the ceremony dustin this is not a yeah. sheep was fine what did you why did you make her work uh i mean we're talking barely work she shot like maybe a hundred photos all day long doesn't i am disappointed she in late you. late like, in why the did you most n- of the day why did you not let her go home why did you not we, call me the wedding was in muncie Indiana or just outside Muncie, Indiana. Perfect. I used uh, to live in Muncie, Indiana. My in-laws still live in Muncie, Indiana. And so there wasn't like, I wasn't going to let her Uber all the way back to Fort Wayne from Muncie. I could have come. She could have taken my car, driven I back to Fort you Wayne. you guys didn't have a wedding. Whenever and I then, talk to you, you always have a wedding. And then I could have just come with you to Fort Wayne and got my car back. And then driven from Fort Wayne to where, you know, I grew up. Yeah. In Fort Wayne. Oh, I didn't grow up in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Not from that shithole. <laughs> but yeah, so we shot a wedding, killed it, knocked it out of the park. Um, almost killed us, and by us, I mean my wife. And yeah, I think you should really uh, cut back on the killed it, knocked it out of the park. You almost <laughs> murdered your wife for the dollar? For the uh, dollar? For our, for our couples? For our couple, mm, Stephen. For the dollar. All praise be to the dollar. 
Mm -hmm. Well, you have to keep in mind too, I'm being a little conservative now because we incurred like $6,000 in vet bills last week. So (sighs) we're trying to be a little bit more frugal. That's what I'm here for. I'm the cheap option. (laughs) Yeah. You were the furthest thing from the cheap (laughs) option. You're the most expensive prostitute I've ever paid for. But I'm good. You're paying for the quality. I'm cheaper than what the quality should dictate. As long as as I'm not using audio. Um, Ouch. But yeah. Uh, Dustin, (laughs) let's do some follow-up. Dustin, you're another week in. How is it working? Working in the political infrastructure. What's it like being on the inside? Uh, It's really great. It's uh, really enjoyable because you get sort of a backseat look, or I shouldn't say a backseat, a behind the scenes look at um, some of the things that are going around as like mud starts to get kicked around in the press on certain topics and issues. um, You get to kind of hear, you know, at least one side of the story Mm -hmm. um, to kind of understand wait, that's really not true. This is actually what's going on. Um, So yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, I think things really officially get kicked off uh, first week of June. So yeah, it'll be fun. We've been building last week and this week just kind of digital content for the campaign. Cool. So I'll be shooting all kinds of cheesy ass stuff tomorrow for it. But it'll be a good time. And you got to meet the mayor, right? The mayor now knows my first name. Yeah, you you and the mayor, your best buds. Is he going to take care of all your drone tickets? Probably the bestest of buds. So he can take care of those drone tickets. Is that what you're telling me? It was funny because I was flying my drone yesterday. This is unrelated to the mayor because I do real estate photography. Uh, Flying my drone, shooting a house for a police officer. And he had like... other police officers over there like helping them out and they were like all ooing and aahing of my drone like checking it out uh they were all in like the uh, i better not say where what unit they're in but um checking it out and then i'm thinking all i'm thinking to myself is like what i'm doing right now is probably like so illegal <laughs> uh and you know in retrospect and like not a single one of them cares <laughs> why would they so. care it's, they're off work you know they're they're not on the job then I don't know. Is a cop really ever off work? I don't know if you if you'd pulled up with a bunch of cocaine, you would have found out. If they're in if they're in <laughs> uniform, yes, if they're in uniform. Yeah, I made a stupid joke. So in their, I was photographing their basement, and they're like moving boxes around for me while I was photographing it. And they had a big L shaped pipe from I'm um, guessing like something in you know their furnace or whatever. And uh, I was like, wow, that is a big pipe for smoking something. Am I right? And then I kind of forgot my audience when I landed that joke. Did you land and that joke? Just... <laughs> it sounds like maybe you didn't land that joke. It sounds like maybe um, the joke started to take off and then halfway up it just wrecked. Yeah, it was bad. And then sank. It wrecked over the water. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they just kind of looked at me and I was like, uh, you know, smoked brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you actually no. said that. <laughs> God, I did. What do you say wow. after that? You said smoked brisket. You look like you see this giant pipe. You make a pot smoking joke. Yeah. And then you look up to see three dressed in uniform officers. And you're like, brisket. I would have been like, just weed, not crack. <laughs> I'm not talking about meth. I'm talking about weed, the good stuff. But then I almost took it a step further and I was like, after no one laughed and I wanted to be like, you guys must be vegetarians. But then I was like, no. What are you thinking? What are you doing? I'm cringing listening to this story. Let this joke just die here on the floor of this basement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have just moved on. So then afterwards, we all went and lit up outside on the back patio. <laughs> now we need to know that unit name. What was it? Was it weed? Was it crack? Was it meth? What were you lighting up? A uh, nice combo of it all. <laughs> just kind of mixed it. <laughs> Whatever they had in the evidence bag. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, more follow-up. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My favorite team and Tom Hanks' favorite team, Aston Villa, they made it through. 
They're going to be back in the Premier League, baby. Longtime listener to the show, Tommy Hanks. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of you, when you listen to this show, you probably thought, which one of Dustin and Steve is more like Tom Hanks? And up until now, you probably thought, like everyone else, Dustin. But no, it is I. I am actually the little child in a big man body. That's right. I'm Tom Hanks. Circa Dave, big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the the good Tom Hanks and big. You got mail. Yeah, that one too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. What are some other mm-hmm. ones? Joe versus the volcano? A box of chocolates. Box of chocolates. No, just the ones with Meg Ryan. Nope, just the ones with Meg Ryan. <laughs> Steve, you got any volleyballs laying around your office there? Wilson? Are you looking for Wilson? He's right there. I'm looking for Wilson. What are you drinking over there tonight, Steven? Oh, you want to do some beer talk? Bring it on. Tonight, Dustin, I have a deduction ale. Is that right? Yeah, deduction Belgian-style double ale from Taxman Brewing Company. Dustin, what are you drinking over there tonight? That's so funny you should say that, Stephen Van Elk, a great Indiana man drinking a great Indiana beer. I, too, am drinking a Taxman Brewery specialty, a La Maison, as I've been told by you it's pronounced. I don't think I ever would have said it that pretentious. I would have said, like, <laughs> La Maison. No, it's French. Yeah, La Maison, uh, just just like how you, you were with those cops, Blazing, bla- Blazing Doobies. <laughs> but it's an American farmhouse ale. Uh, it's quite yummy, quite scrumptious. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, seems like your love for tax men has worn off on me. <laughs> yeah, maybe now my love for Aston Villa will wear off on you. Or my love uh, for Tom Hanks, you know? Just your love in general. <laughs> you know, more follow-up. Listener Cortland Wilson actually sent me a video today. You made fun of me because I used the word relegated, which if you listen to the last episode, I like stumble over the word because I was afraid mm-hmm. to use it because I knew how much you would hate it and how much you would make fun of me. <laughs> Listener Cor- Cortland Wilson warmed my heart up. He sent me a video where uh, at that point where you said nobody cares when you start using words like relegated, he just said, I care. And the, you know, it... But- it it but made my world. It made made me feel whole in my heart, and um, it was a real good feel. And I uh, just want to give a big thanks to listener Cortland Wilson. Uh, mm, Dustin, do you want to do some uh, topics? Now that we got back to a have, good feel in Steve's heart, a very good. Well, feel. Do we need to do we need to have a moment of giving thanks? No, 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 no we, we, we'll do that after the topics. Oh uh, well, it's out of order then in the show notes. So I'm gonna murder you. There's also the closer that comes before giving thanks. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. I'm, we've never talked about it. So. Dustin, first up on our topics, what do you, uh, which, which one do you want to hit first? There's, we got a lot of news that happened this week in the photography world. Uh, let's talk about how I am now third place in the world, Steven. You're third place? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. All right. Yeah. No, let's talk about that. What were you but, second but how place I'm in? also second place? No, no, no. I want to know, what were you second place in before? Uh, caramel apple eating. And who pushed you out? Was it Bobby Joe? Bobby J. Oh. With, a, with an A-Y. You got beat by Bobby J? Bobby J. You apple know, fritter, they called him. He's missing those two front teeth, so he can really get in there real fast, you know? He can get more yeah. apple in the mouth that way. I just don't like caramel, personally. When, when his front teeth fell out, he actually had two little tiny razor blades put in that just barely stick out from the gum. So he has a clear advantage there. It's just more raw eating power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think he should technically be disqualified from the contest, but, you know, that's not up to me to decide. That's up to the caramel apple eating judges. Yeah. Wait, caramel uh, apple eating? Damn. That's going to wreck those razors up. But, in all honesty, what Steven is alluding to here is the fact that... that what you're alluding to. <laughs> typical camera standings in the U.S. of A is... Canon number one, Nikon number two, and somebody else number three. Uh, For the last year or two, it's been Sony. And this year, my friends, this year, Sony has unmounted Nikon. See what I did there? A little camera lens reference there? I thought that was Uh, a horseback riding reference. 
It could be. It could be. Do you want to talk about a lot of horses? horseback riding? <laughs> do a lot of horse references here in this show. I mean, heck, you do talk about soccer like it's going out of style. Um, soccer isn't polo. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no horses in soccer. How are you so confused you t- <laughs> about this sport? <laughs> Lacrosse, whatever. Anyways, um, so. <laughs> So Sony has taken the number two spot for the most camera bodies sold. Um, and their plan is, according to this article on Pata Pixel, um, is to unseat Canon by 2021. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about this, Stephen? Do you think that your beloved Canon skin-toned cameras can... Uh, fall prey to sony's um awesomeness i mean I it all comes down to what canon puts out for their next few cameras can about what they put out can they get a mirrorless <laughs> camera that is lower in price than what sony's currently offering that is as good or better than them because their colors are so much better i don't know why anyone would want to switch to sony just based on color alone but I mean, once once you figure out how you want to edit the Sony's to compensate for that color thing, then you just batch apply those edits. So it doesn't really it like that difference doesn't really stick with you in the long run once you once you get wrap your head around that. But I mean, like straight out of camera, the Canons just look better. So, ah oh, man, I don't know. It's tough because we don't know what Canon's going to put out next, buddy. Hmm. It could it could be a game changer. According to this article, Sony is committed to $9 billion in investments uh, into their sensors wow. over the next few years. That's, that's a quite, lot of cheddar. Yeah, that's quite the commitment. Canon's kind of less worried about sensors and more worried about glass, right? So, I don't know. I, I feel like Sony's probably making the better bets here. I feel like Sony's probably going to dethrone Canon, maybe Canon shouldn't have uh, let them into their zone, you know, because now Sony's definitely in their zone. Welcome to the party. Boom, 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 ba, boom, boom. Nope. Nope. <laughs> not, not what I was going for. Yeah, no. Welcome to the party. What was that? I was talking I, about I Canon don't. being on the throne. <laughs> I don't know any Game of Thrones music. No, no Game of Thrones music. Wow. So uh, it's sort of Kanye, like Jay-Z. Feel. Don't let me into my zone. Definitely in my zone. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I'm Sorry, gonna have man. to find the song and just like insert a real quick clip. There you go. Why now? Watching the throne. Don't let me into my zone. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting because we all have seen and heard and felt the rise of the scene, you know, King Sony to the the throne. I I wonder how much um, longer it's gonna be before Fuji pushes out Nikon. I feel like Fuji is really rising. They're a rising star. What are they? Uh, they are. Did they just put out that medium format camera that's like crazy ridiculously good? And a one is third it? of the price of like other medium format cameras? Uh, Steven, I don't know about you, but that sponsorship check hasn't cleared yet. So <laughs> we don't have to talk about good things about Fuji yet. Okay. I think Let's Fuji's big mistake ourselves. is they don't have a full frame camera. Now, Panasonic, on the other hand, wow. What? Why are you talking about Panasonic? <laughs> Unless we're talking video, who cares? Video, yeah, I'd go for that Lumix all day. check is real good. <laughs> Olympus? Now we're talking. What? No. no get the... F- <laughs> Have you ever used uh, one of the Panasonic, Panasonic Lumix cameras for video stuff? Like the GH5? Yeah. Uh, I have not personally, um, if you recall, Stephen, if you rewind your entire life about two years, um, I believe, give or take, I was about to buy a Panasonic GH4 Mm -hmm. and someone named Stephen Van Elk was like, no man, the future is in Sony. Yeah. You need to get an A6500. I think I think what it came down to there was price, what you could afford, and that's why I said A6500, because comparably, 
Which the is GH4 the same compared price to the A6500. No, it was not. The GH4 was so much more expensive. Uh, not, I mean, a little bit more expensive. I've worked with a second shooter for video who used uh, the GH5, and I loved the way it looked. I loved everything about it. Um, I've worked with people who use Sony for video, and mm -hmm. color correcting Sonys to try to look as good as a Canon is super difficult. Panasonic, it felt like, was almost right there. So I was a big fan of the, the Lumix. It looked great, and the colors were great. Well, if so. you love it so much, why don't you marry it? Um, because it's not really great for photo still. <laughs> it's great for video, but the, the photo end of it is just, why would I ever get that when, I mean, in most of Jen and I's work is photo. So w why would I get a Lumix if most of my because work is Because you like shooting video too. I do, but the, the 5D Mark IV is still so much better in my opinion. <laughs> but is for it? For reasons of color, for reasons of color and for what I'm doing. All you care about is color. I do. I care so much about color. Color means so much when it comes to your photos. Racist. Um, you know, not everybody right. can just turn all their photos black and white like you do. Hey, somebody's got to do it. It's a tough world out there. It is a tough world out there. W what do you think? You, you think Fuji's not coming up? You don't think they're coming up in the world? People love um, that X-T3. Do they? They do. I think people love it because it looks retro. It looks vintage. Um, I don't think if you're a serious wedding photographer, and I say this lightly, Ooh. I say this lightly. Um, I think you're always, you're always, even if you shoot Fuji or you shoot with a crop sensor, you're always going to long for that full frame sensor. Mm. Until you you're get gonna, that medium format Fuji sensor. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then you you're like, why would I ever shooting on these crappy full frame sensors? So, I mean, as somebody who shot with medium format cameras, um, I've just, I love medium format. The tonalities and the richness you get in those files is fantastic. But, I mean, unless you need just crazy, crazy creamy bokeh, I mean, it's really overkill. Mm, crazy creamy opinion. bokeh sounds great to me. Yeah, but it's not like $4,000 great or whatever those cameras are costing. Mm, okay, okay. The, um, the Fuji medium format camera is $10,000, which is a third of the price of most other medium format cameras. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I have literally done no research into this, <laughs> into the price of this. I've looked at text so specs and photos and photos were that I saw so far were kind of meh. Nah. Um, so as we were talking about life is hard, wedding photography is hard. Um, Steve, did you want to talk about why Claire Harding <laughs> thinks wedding photography is hard? <laughs> oh, you just picked this one because you knew how much it pissed me off to read this. A little bit. So on um, Petapixel this week, there was an article going around written it's by a woman Pixel. named Claire Harding, and it was called Why I Will Never Be a Wedding Photographer. And people loved sharing this. I, at one point in time, going through like the wedding photography hashtag on Twitter, it was literally every other tweet was this article. So, Dustin, if you pull it up, she gives three reasons why she would never want to be a wedding photographer. Reason number one, she hates her own wedding photos. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the reason most wedding photographers get into wedding photography. They see their own photos, they hate them, they think I could do better, and then they get into it. But she says that... She said she wanted documentary style photos and all the photos were uh, really posed. And after two hours of posing, she was just done with it. And um, yeah, it didn't live up to her expectations. Her next reason is she says, if you don't know that you can nail it the first time, every time, all day, don't tell people that you can, which I don't really understand how that has anything to do with being a wedding photographer. So if you apply that metaphor to another profession, like, I don't know, let's say a surgeon, 
And if you can't save someone's life every time, you should quit your fucking job. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> nobody's ever gone to a surgeon and died before. <laughs> At least not. <laughs> That'd be unheard of. In the U.S. It, it, never in the U.S. United States of America. And sometimes people come in and it's like they're on the brink of death and they're in the ER and they're like, just send them to a surgeon. It'll fix everything. And they're like, no, <laughs> this is not a surgery fixable case. This is actually a bacterial infection that has taken over this person's uh, spinal cord and they're going to die like, of no, meningitis. No, no, no. And they're like, no, no, no. I said a surgeon. Take them to a surgeon immediately. <laughs> this is how we solve this And then this immediately... One. The speakers kick on and you hear, like a surgeon for the very first time. Oh, gosh. Why no. Why do you love Weird Al so much? What's not to love, I, I really shouldn't say anything. I've spent uh, innumerable minutes, hours, days, days? <laughs> listening to the Lonely Island's new uh, Netflix special. The Bash Bros. Oh, is that good? I haven't watched that yet. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. It's so good. It's it, it's a thirty minute long rap rap music video about Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire, and it's just off the wall batshit crazy. Uh, I can only assume they were really, really high on lots of different psychotropic drugs when they wrote this thing. And it is just, it's their humor, which is hilarious. Um, I love, I love everything they've done. Have you ever seen Popstar Never Stop Never Stopping? Mm -hmm. It's I have. amazingly funny. I cannot believe it got yanked from theaters after one week. <sighs> that movie is so, so funny. It made me laugh so hard. And I've listened to the the uh, the soundtrack for that so many times. Uh, the song Mona Lisa, on repeat, in my house, all the time. Jen hates it. What about Amish Paradise? Oh, you're back to Weird Al? Okay. Yeah. Yep, just yeah. Whew, taking it back for you there. Yeah. So anyway, if you don't know that you can nail it the first time, every time, all day, uh, Amish Paradise was my jam in like junior high. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. tell people that you can. I don't really understand what that has to do with wedding photography. Um, wedding photography is kind of run and gun, and I feel like people miss stuff all the time, and uh, they don't nail stuff all the time. Stuff happens. It's part of uh, being a wedding photographer. Korean photography. We get everything all the time. Uh, until you hire Pat Steve Van to run your sound. <laughs> Pat and Bendy. <laughs> um, I've never met a wedding photographer who would tell you, hey, at the end of the wedding day, I nailed everything all day, all the time. Like, it's just crazy. That's such a weird thing to say, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. Um, and then her last point out of her three is we all know that weddings can be expensive. This is true. Yeah. And she says, uh, when it comes to booking a photographer, I hear the words, that's so expensive, stupidly often. And all I can think is, but you just said you'd never do wedding photography. So when it comes to booking a wedding photographer, when the hell are you ever hearing the words, that's so expensive? Because you said you'd never do it. So like, it just doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. This all sounds like somebody who is scared of the concept of doing a wedding because of the stress of it's an event that only happens one time, you don't get any redos. And so instead of like trying it out and seeing if they could do it and if they were good at it, instead they're just like, you know what? I think I'd rather just never try it out. I'm too scared. And the whole thing comes off as like a weird fear piece. Which is why I don't understand why so many people were sharing it. Because people were sharing it and they're like, yep. I would never be a wedding photographer either. And I'm like, did you read the article or did you just read like the, the title? Cause like what you're basically saying to me when you say, yeah, I agree with this is I'm scared to try something I've never tried before. True. I don't know. I feel like you're not going to get anywhere in life if that's your, your personality. And like, maybe you don't want to be a wedding photographer and that's cool, but you like, what else? That's not true, Steve. Tr Steve, you will get, at least to the point where you get to write for Petapixel. <laughs> Anybody can write for Petapixel. You just have to submit an article. And if they like it, they'll publish it. And obviously they saw this one and they're like, well, you know, it's wedding season. Let's shit on wedding photographers. People will share the shit out of this. And it worked. 
I saw it everywhere. I've seen it in so many Facebook groups. I've seen it all over Twitter. I've even seen people share like the picture like with it on their Instagram and be like, I just read this article. And it's like, you can't even put a link on your Instagram. Like, why are you sharing this here? (sighs) That's my rant for the day. Don't share things on Instagram that you need a link for. I put a link in my profile. Just share it. Share it in your story. If you have over 10,000 followers and you put a link in your story. <sighs> who, who shares things to their Instagram and then changes the link in their Instagram profile on a weekly basis or a daily basis in some people's cases where they're like, now check out this link. Now check out this link. Then they have like 20 photos going back that are like, hit that link in my profile. And by the time like you, cause Instagram doesn't necessarily show you the things in order. So by the time somebody sees, you know, their third post of the day with a new link that they want you to go to, you might not even be able to get to that link anymore. Now you're just confused and you're lost and you're in a wasteland. I mean, this isn't really these people's fault. It's Instagram's fault for creating such a crappy social media thing where you can't even link out to something unless you have over 10,000 well, followers and then you can in your story. It wasn't designed to be something to have linking out. If you are a photographer, if you run a small business, get active on Twitter. Twitter is all about pushing people to your websites, pushing people to your links. Instagram is all about screwing you over and not letting that happen. They want you to keep everything on Instagram where you cannot monetize or you have a very difficult time monetizing. How many and how many clients do you book through Instagram a year? Uh, all of them. All of them? Wow. Proud of you. Proud of you. So, so and proud. And that rant brought to you by the angry man, Stephen Van Elk, an old man we found in a small home living somewhere under a bridge. Well, thanks just... for having me on the show, Stephen Dustin. I'm going to take <laughs> off now. i got to get back to my bridge. There's gold under there. <laughs> and hope you wipe after that gold. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> if you wipe, the gold disappears. <laughs> Oh, Stephen, speaking of your beloved cannons, what do you think about this 7D being put to bed? This is, I mean, totally expected, but uh, let's just go ahead and play with this. This is heartbreaking. The you, Do you guys have a 7D? We have a 7D. We have the original 7D. The, 7D, the original? Yeah. Just autograph. The 7D, Limited not even edition. like a 7D Mark I or anything. Uh, I don't, it's it's just the 7D. The next one was the 7D Mark II. Um, we bought that camera after our house was broken into and Jen's Nikon gear was stolen. And we had to buy a new camera so that we could, you know, kickstart this wedding photography business. And Canon 7D shot 1080p. And uh, Nikon only shot 720p at the time. You know, Sony didn't exist. Fuji was, who would use that? And I, mm-hmm. I want a video that could do full HD. So I convinced Jen to go with the Canon 7D over whatever we could afford from Nikon at the time. And that was the best, best decision we ever made because Canon is so the... much better than Nikon. And, uh, you know, it breaks my heart to see the, the camera that brought us into the Canon family being killed off. So are you going to go stock up? <laughs> On seven D's? <laughs> Give me all the seven D's you have. I need that APS-C <laughs> sensor. <laughs> No, um, I feel that someday I'll retire and I'll need to shoot sports and I want that crop sensor. I don't know what accent that was. It was a good one. Really I loved it. It was hurt, very good. Hurt a little bit. I guess I just don't know why at this point you'd even buy a 7D to begin with. I mean, it's APS-C. So you um, started this by saying you were sad that the 7D was leaving. I am sad. I mean, I'm, but I'm, now I'm, you're like, I don't even know why it's still here. You no, know, I was sad when I graduated from high school because I wasn't going to see all my good, good friends the next day, but I was also happy because I was going to college and that'd be a lot better. So, you know, uh, you can be both sad and happy at the same time. And I think it's time we all moved on away Small from the 7D. Small disclaimer, Steve burnt his, co- his high school down. <laughs> It's the last day. I told everybody to get in the pool and they'd be safe. <laughs> Spoiler oh. alert, they were not safe. <laughs> Water boils, people. Yeah, the roof collapsed on the pool. <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> oh, it does sound like you gave this thought. <laughs> that actually happened. Really? Not with people in the pool, though. That would have been dumb, but... <laughs> There's a fire, you get out of the building. You don't go to the pool. I know, I know the building's burning, but I'm, I'm going to do a few laps real quick. Watch me cannonball off this diving board <laughs> surrounded by flames. Water can't burn. No, it can't. It can just steam. That's right. Steamy Van Elk. That's what they call me. <laughs> After I murdered everyone from my high school in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to the 7D in canon. Yeah. So, I mean, they're going to announce like an 80D, which basically is a cheaper version of the 7D, right? Like a new 80D. And uh, I, I don't know. Who was buying the 7D recently anyway? Yeah, I always love these naming conventions. The, all the, all mm. the camera lines have these weird naming conventions. Like Sony's got the A7 III, A7R... Three A seven S three, but at A9, least they only have A nine two. At least they only have the four lines. Yeah, that's just because they're not as successful as Canon yet. Once they get more successful, they'll have more lines. It'll be more confusing. They just need to go the Apple route with their branding. This is the high res camera. This is the high ISO camera. This is for the people who can't afford these. Isn't Canon kind of already doing that now that they've moved to mirrorless? Now that they're on mirrorless, it's just here's EOS R, here's EOS RP. It's cheaper and less good. And if you want the really crappy ones made for consumers, that's the EOS M series. M for mobile. It's just an iPhone. We slipped in a Canon body. Basically. <laughs> But yeah, I've never never been able to keep up with all the Canon naming structures. So I mean, per- apparently they're gonna have a mirrorless alternative to the 7D, an EOS R mirrorless alternative. So not an EOS M. So it'll actually use like the new R mount system, and that'll be great. That's cool. Yeah, I can't wait for you to go mirrorless. I yeah no, I showed Jen a photo of the EOS R. And she wanted it real bad, except it only if if it had two two card mm, slots, man. Back to the double slots. It's important. Need for, them twin cards. Yeah, no, it's important for wedding photographers. I told you, like just Is a it? few weeks ago at a wedding I shot, we had a card corrupt and had to go mm. and you know, well, actually we didn't have to go to the other one. I was able to get all the photos off it. But still yeah. it was very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Can you think, there was like a day and a time where people used to say to other photographers, you want to bring a bunch of like eight gig cards with you to shoot the wedding and then Mm -hmm. switch out your eight gig cards throughout the day. Because if one of your cards fails, you don't want to lose all the photos from the wedding. And like people took to that idea and like i still hear people saying that and i see people posting that in facebook groups like oh no no, you don't want a big card and it's like just just shoot with two cards have it shoot raw to both cards and then you're fine you don't have to worry about well what if this card corrupts because you have a backup card and it's just utterly ridiculous to me the lengths people went to when they had like a one card system which you you don't take into account at all. You still shoot one card. It's like a 512 gigabyte card, and you just put like 12 weddings on it. You don't put them on a computer, and you're just kind of like <laughs> waiting to see what happens. Like every time you go out with your camera, you're rolling the dice. I just put I just put that camera on my Easy Print Easy Share Kodak mount when I get home, and just print those four by sixes off. I mean, I don't really blame you because the Nikon's you were using don't they use that crazy like card slot? for the second card that's super expensive the d4 does yeah yeah and you have a d4 right Mm -hmm. yeah so like why one why did you get the d4 too i don't really blame you for not wanting to buy super expensive cards i got i got hoodwinked into buying the d4 Mm -hmm. not that i regret it i love that camera but I was shooting Michael Phelps, uh, a little known. Um, I guess he swims oh, from time gosh, to time. Oh, gosh, we get it. You know an Olympian. Okay. <laughs> you took photos. We understand. You and, don't see me uh, coming on and bragging all the time. 
the art Last director week was I like, shot a counselor for a local community center, okay? I don't come on here and brag to you. You can. <laughs> <laughs> it is your podcast <laughs> with me. Um, but yeah, the art director was like, when I told him I had a D800, he was like, ooh, we might want like a pro body for this shoot. And I th- didn't know he was joking at the time, so I went out and bought a D4. <laughs> That's how much I wanted the job of shooting Michael Phelps. Do you, did you shoot Michael Phelps? I've never seen these photos of Michael Phelps. And then I shot Michael Phelps, and they ended up using my D800 because they wanted to tether. And the cord that they brought to tether to the laptop was uh, in cap- uh, not compatible with my D4. Because the D800 and the D4 use different HDMI cords. Did you go uh, ahead and return that D4 or did you just hang on to it? I just hang hung on to it <laughs> because, oh, I remember what happened. They broke the HDMI port on my D4. <laughs> did you make them pay for that to get fixed? Yeah, I made them pay for that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love everything about this. This story is the peak Dustin. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, owner of the company we were shooting for tripped over the cord <laughs> peak dustin you got to brag about <laughs> your photography you also got to talk about how you you got tricked like with a kickstarter <laughs> and then how you mm-hmm. <laughs> take it all in steven I'm sorry then, then, then you had to work with the company to try to get your gear fixed it broke Oh yeah, yeah. Needless to say, I've never shot for them again. <laughs> yeah, they spent so much money fixing your D four, they couldn't afford to shoot with you again. They went out of business shortly after. <laughs> That's a lie. That is a lie. No, it it it's actually the company that made these headphones, Soul Republic. <laughs> they were one of the sponsors of Michael Phelps. So if you ever saw him at the Olympics with the red, white, and blue headphones. And the story even ends with you <laughs> cryptically talking about how they got their comeuppance. Peak Dustin. <laughs> Those assholes got it, though. <laughs> They're out of business now. I put, I put them out of business. Little did they know how expensive <laughs> fixing a D4 was. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Should we uh, do some questions, Stephen? I don't know. I don't know if anything we record from here on out will be better than what you just told me. It is my life. Dustin, can you think of anything that would be better than that? Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve... James Kelly from our very own facebook group ask the following is it just me or does this bug anyone else you have just spent hours editing or sending them away to be edited by a third party wedding photographs you love them the couple loves them yet when you come across the couple on social media they are using shitty smartphone slash and or tablet photographs taken by guests for their profile pictures rant over p.s i just reread this over in my head with steven van elk's voice it was not a pleasant experience (laughs) i love how that ended that's why we let dustin read this question james kelly i have to tell you I hear everything in Stephen Van Elk's voice in my head. Ooh, what does that sound like? Kind of like nails on a chalkboard mixed with sort of a baby taking its last breaths. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that got real dark at the end there. <laughs> can, you, can you give me some of that Steve Van Elk voice flavor, though? Your best impersonation? Mm. It, while reading James <laughs> Kelly's uh, question, you know. Okay, you ready? You have just spent hours editing. (laughs) Keep going, keep going. (laughs) 
I gotta get real close to that mic like you do. You've just spent hours <laughs> editing or s- s- sending them out to a third party. <laughs> you love them. The couple loves them. Yet, when you, James Kelly, <laughs> come across the pictures on social media, <laughs> they're using shitty smartphone pictures taken by a guest for their profile pictures. Rant over. <laughs> James, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that, I think it's pretty close? obvious what needs to happen here, James. You need to shoot better pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I think when the portrait mode on people's iPhones, James, is trumping um, your photos, I think, James, there's a bigger problem at hand. Yeah, it's all on you, James. You, you've screwed everything <laughs> up. You done did it wrong. You did it all wrong. And you're hearing that told to you in Stephen Van Elk's voice. <laughs> Which is the same voice you've been hearing in your head over and over again for the last few years. I gotta say, I think this used to bug me more than it does now when I would see a client post a photo that was just like some, uh, let's say, not great photo taken by a guest. Um, And I would get disappointed, I would say. Raging mad, uh, you know, just just raging mad. I rage. We lost so many computers back then and smartphones because I would just throw them into a wall whenever I saw it. There's no way to really mm-hmm. control that kind of anger that arises. Other than maybe starting a podcast, mm-hmm. you could say maybe it was like an incredible anger. Um, you know, you might say that as I became more angry, I grew stronger, greener, greener even. Uh, I I. I learned to let this go a while ago. It just, people are going to post whatever crappy thing they want. And a lot of times if the photo comes from a friend or a relative, it means more to them than it does if it came from you. So James, once again, it's all your fault. You need to become better friends with all of your clients, James. But James, James, when, when your clients are proposing, you should have already been there. When your clients are looking for a best man, that should be you, James. You need to be their best friend. James, I don't know well, how things made. work in Scotland on that little island that you call a home in the United Kingdom. But here in America, in America, we work America. with people who we have good relationships with. And we develop the best relationships with people. I cannot like tell you fellow podcast how hosts. many times Jen and I have shot a wedding and the bride and groom had said, have said at the wedding, if we weren't marrying each other, we would be marrying Jen and Steve right now. <laughs> that is how good of friends Jen and Steve are with us, which is why they don't use anybody else's photos for their profile pictures. It's always our photos because we know exactly how to capture them. When they see our photos, it's like we ripped a piece of their soul out because we probably did. Because that's how close we are. It's a bond. Doesn't, I mean, doesn't, you've, you've been taking photos of people for a long time. You also mm-hmm. work in the United States where it is mandatory that your best yep. friends are almost lovers with the people who you're shooting photographs of. So tell me, what's it like shooting for the mayor of Fort Wayne? (laughs) Uh, Pretty much just like shooting a wedding. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How many times has the mayor of Fort Wayne looked at you and said, if I wasn't already married, I would marry you, Dustin. Every day. Every day. The Republican. Every day. (laughs) Wow. Every day is a wall. Anyways, so I'm working for the Democratic Party, Stephen. What? I let you allude to it in the last episode that I was working for the Republican. You told me you were working for a Republican. I did at the beginning of this process. <gasps> Dustin, you bamboozled him. Then I jumped ship. You pulled a switcheroo. I had to start a bidding war, my friend. I don't understand. If you started a bidding war, how did the Democrats win? All right. Let's move on from that. <laughs> Dustin, how do you keep your clients from sharing cell phone photo profile pictures with the world? 
Uh, it's pretty easy, Stephen. Uh, I don't friend my clients on Facebook, um, <laughs> so, so don't I don't know. see uh, their photos because I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can either go all in like I do, or you can go all out like Dustin does. <laughs> Stephen and I are writing uh, an ebook on this that will be available uh, here soon about calling, um, what would you say we're calling this, Stephen? The, uh, the art of the don't give a f- um, I thought it was the art of trying not to f- your clients. Uh, it's we're we're playing with a few different working titles, James. Um but I think it could be a great resource. Maybe it was the f- of not arting your clients. <laughs> or f- your client? No, that wasn't it. <laughs> that, not that one. But yeah, James, I think the trick here is uh, when you see a friend of the bride and groom, a colleague, a guest, what have you, taking photos at the wedding, you need to be more proactive. When you see that phone jump up out of their pocket, you slam that shit down, James. You got to put an end to that before it even starts. Mm, James, here in America, we have a game uh, called Slap Hand, where it's a very simple game. You put your hands out and... Uh, you, you have your palms facing down. The other person puts their hands palm up underneath your hands. So now your hands are touching. And now the, the point of the game is for the person on the other side to try to slap the other person's hand before that person can pull their hand away. And uh, so mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. a fast slapper is how you win the game. And I think maybe if you guys play that a little more in Uck, maybe then you would be better prepared. Eek to slap those phones out of people's hands. It's all about the reaction yeah. time. You got you got to be a slip slap slippy slapper, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, the slippiest of slappers. Maybe what you could try doing is uh instead of since you're obviously not good at slapping phones out of people's hands, maybe just uh go around, shake hands with every single person at the wedding. Um the important detail here, you're going to want to have a glove on when you do this handshaking. And uh, you just spray some WD-40 on the palm of that glove. So now, whenever any one of the guests goes to pull their phones out, whoa, they can't keep that in their hand. It's falling all over the place. What are they going to do? Oh, the only person here without slippy hands, that's you, James. Now you you got everything under control. (laughs) Nobody's out there with a phone anymore, James. See, it's not where I thought you were going with that. I like that. That's even better. Oh, you thought it was going to be a jerk-off party. (laughs) Everybody at the wedding now is lubed up on their hands and they're ready to go. Is that what you were getting at, Dustin? No, that is that is not. That was also not where you were going. Where did you think I was going? I thought you were going to go what we call here in Indiana the magnet approach. <laughs> where you bring a giant magnet with you to weddings. And before the wedding, you just have somebody wave the guests down at the entrance, just essentially just killing their phone. Pay, pay no attention. This is just a routine security check. We have to wave this wand over your entire body. Should I put my phone over there in the x-ray machine? No, no, you should not. <laughs> Actually, can you just hold it right to your chest? That'd be the best. Oh, you have a pacemaker, sir? That's okay. <laughs> God, you just murdered their grandfather. Oh, Poppy. But he ain't going to be taking pictures. Cassie May Munier from our very own Facebook group asked question for you guys. I had a phone consult last night with a couple that lives in Colorado. That's got to be a weed wedding, right? Am I right? <laughs> it's got to be a weed wedding. No. Is this question yeah, about weed, wrong. Dustin? Probably they not. are getting married in Cassie's state, though, New York. That could still so be a weed wedding, wrong. right? So you we, were wrong. We, we, weed's legal in New York, right? Right? No. Yeah, it's gotta be. Um, they're getting married in New York on their parents' estate. They seemed like an awesome couple, and their wedding day mm-hmm. seemed like a great fit for Cassie's style. Then they clearly stated that they love to smoke weed. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy that's and, where this went. <laughs> Do we need to read more? <laughs> Okay, that they and mostly everyone there will be smoking all throughout the wedding day and that they have to have photos of all that. Weed is not my thing personally. Big mistake, Cassie. 
<laughs> but I have no problems with others doing it. And frankly, at a lot of weddings, I shoot. It's happening at some point anyway. But discreetly. And I've never been requested to take photos of it. Recreational weed is not legal in New Oh, bummer. Recreational weed's not legal in New York. So I don't know how I feel about straight up photographing them smoking, etc. If I did it, should I be worried about it coming back negatively against my business if they posted the images? Should I be worried that this is such a high priority for their wedding day? LOL. Have you ever been asked to photograph something illegal or that you weren't 100% comfortable with? Hmm. I was asked to photograph a lot of things that might not have been legal and that I wasn't 100% comfortable with. It's (laughs) called When I Was in Sierra Leone with Dustin McKibben. (laughs) Oh, that's Stephen's book coming out this fall. (laughs) But um, Cassie, I'd say just embrace it. Get outside your comfort zone. Take a... Take a walk on the wild side. Um, and then bring a second shooter. Could be Steven, could be Dustin. But Steven. <laughs> or Dustin. Or Steven. Or anyone. But maybe Steven or Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the good thing about this, Cassie, is uh, if you shoot this wedding, if everything goes wrong, they'll more than likely be too high to understand. <laughs> Right? So you're just like, I, my camera's not working, and they're just like, whatever. <laughs> Looks like it's floating to me. And they're not doing psychotropic drugs. It's just weed. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know, You don't Steve. know what that weed has been laced with. Weed is a gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> a gateway to... Cigarettes. Mm, yeah. So recreational weed is not illegal or is not legal in New York, but I'm pretty certain medicinal weed is. Cassie, how do you know that these people aren't all smoking weed that their doctor prescribed to them? It's a very stressful day at a wedding. Maybe they need that weed. Maybe the wedding's sponsored by cannabis. the weed manufacturer. By big <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> by big cannabis. Oh, dude, there are, there's a cannabis wedding expo. It's, uh, it's going to be in Boston, Massachusetts, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Toronto, up in, up in Canada. What does one do at a cannabis wedding expo? It helps expo? brides and grooms find <laughs> cannabis vendors for their wedding, like bud tenders. That's right. You need somebody to roll joints for you at your wedding. <laughs> Instead of a bartender, you get a bud tender. Really? Oh, man, I just, I, I want to go up in a state where it's legal <laughs> and look at a bud tender and be like, what are we, what are we serving tonight? <laughs> what are you rolling tonight? I just want to meet that guy's parents. I just want to meet that guy's parents who are like, yeah, so Joey went to Stanford's full ride. We thought he was really going to do some great things with his life. And, and we couldn't cannabis. be more... Proud of him. And Look what he's so accomplished. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> proud of my boy. We thought he was going to do like hedge funds or some shit. He just keeps bringing these gummy bears. He just keeps bringing these gummy bears home. <laughs> and I can't get enough of them. Cassie, if you are not comfortable with shooting something that is illegal in your state, don't do it. But and recommend Stephen and Dustin <laughs> to photograph this so at least we can show you the images. It sounds like these people are uh, pretty, pretty nonchalant about it. They're pretty, they're pretty cool with bringing it up, and it sounds like they're trying to give you a way out if you're not cool with it. So if you're not cool with it, take that way out. If you are cool with it, uh, I don't see anything wrong with doing photographs of people doing something that is illegal as long as you don't partake in any of the weed on the day. So you might get a contact high from getting too close, you know, uh, if you get in the car with them and they're hot boxing, you know. There you go. Uh, just keep your cameras away from the smoke, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you're saying, Steven. But yeah, uh, I think you're probably good with this one if you if you want to take it. I don't think anything would come back on you negatively. Um, but if you are worried about it, just ask them not to tag you or mention you in the photos that they post that might have weed in them. But I mean, it, they're from Colorado, and in that state it is legal, so they 
they probably don't see anything wrong with it, especially if they're weed enthusiasts. So, um, you know, it could just really be a difference in personality and you need to uh, bounce out of there if, if it's not something you're comfortable with. All right. One more question, Steven. <sighs> this one is a, this one's a serious one. A doozy. It better be a short one. Are you ready? Kevin from a random Facebook group asks the following. How important is the quality of the car you drive to meetings slash weddings? Discuss. Kevin from a random Facebook group asks, how important is the quality of the car? Mm-hmm. Kevin. Steven, he wants to know. <laughs> the quality of the car is incredibly important. <laughs> if you don't have a nice car, no one's going to respect you. Brew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Steven, why don't you share with Kevin up until recently what car you guys drove? Wait, what car did we drive? Uh, it was a little known Yaros. No, I still drive that. <laughs> I'll be driving that to my wedding this weekend. This weekend we have four uh, shoots going on on Saturday. It's so wait, you have the minivan, day. the Hyundai, and the Yaris? No, we got rid of the minivan. It's just the Hyundai. Oh, the, I assumed you got rid of the, the Yaris. Tucson and uh, the Yaris. No, we hung on to the Yaris because gas mileage. And also, minivans are gross. The minivan was rusting out, so. Gotcha. Minivan had to go. And go it did. Uh, I don't think there's... <sighs> Kevin, if I can be serious for a second with you, bro. I don't think the, the quality of your car is important when you're going to shoot a wedding. That's funny. You just said it, it was. <laughs> I'm waffling on this one. I'm a waffler. It's not important Flip at all. Stephen yeah. Van Elk. <laughs> Who cares? You, you show up to the wedding on a pogo stick. As long as the photos look good, that's all that matters. Kevin, get better at your photos. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, though, Stephen Van Elk, uh, there is a essence of confidence that comes with driving a nice car. Mm. And you think you, you think driving a nice a car gives you more. that big dick energy, so you can shoot better mm -hmm. photos. Not so much shoot better photos, but when you walk into a bridal meeting and you step out of that Mercedes or that with, Tesla. With big dick energy. We call it wooded. And <laughs> you walk in there and you feel that wooded. sense. <laughs> you walk in, you've got a raging boner. <laughs> That's the McKibben style. <laughs> How he goes to every meeting. <laughs> uh, whatever it takes. And <laughs> whatever it takes to get them to sign. <laughs> Um, let's just hope they don't mistake it for the pen. Um, but they... So not big feel... dick energy then. That's very, very tiny dick energy. <laughs> oddly, oddly, oddly long for how thick it is. <laughs> it's thin dick energy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, no, I feel like... And obviously, Kevin, this, this changes depending on your market and your location. But, I mean, I know some photographers in the Indianapolis area that felt that having, like, a Cadillac really helped them take, you know, have clients take them more seriously when they were shooting higher-end weddings. But, honestly, some of the highest-end weddings we have book us over the phone. Yep. So, I feel like if you're good enough at your job, you can seal the mother deal. Not even meeting them. And if you don't want people to see your car, then you just park a block or two away when you go to the meeting, which is what I do when I have the yards. <laughs> you jump on your pogo stick. You jump on your pogo stick and pogo stick the rest of the way there. When you meet at like Starbucks or where do you guys even meet at? What's your like go-to meeting place? Usually local coffee shops, uh, Starbucks in a pinch if we need a place. The so well is a good meet, one. Hubbard's, Hubbard and, and Cravens is good too. And they do that little like, oh, okay, it's time to exit the meeting. Do you like hang around or do you do the whole like, oh, I parked three blocks west? 100% that second one. I'm like, hey, well, I'll see you guys later. I had to park a block or two away. And then I walk away. I walk. And then, then they're like, it's so weird, Steve. We parked a couple blocks away too. And I'm like, really? What direction? And they point in a direction. I go, oh, I'm the other way. Darn. And then I walk <laughs> the opposite direction. And then a few, half hour later, I circle back to my car. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'm 
going all ninja on this, making sure I can't be seen and making sure they're not looking around. Like maybe they, they suspected the Yaris is my Yaris and now they're waiting <laughs> to see if I'm going to get in the Yaris. I love my Yaris. <laughs> it's a great little car. gets great gas mileage and it's all paid off. It's been paid off for a long time. I was booking four to $5,000 weddings driving my Robin Egg Blue Cavalier. When, when did this happen? Because you just raised your prices to the price point where you could book four to $5,000 weddings earlier this year. And I've never back seen a Robin I, Egg Cavalier. Was this when you were working for that other guy? Back when I was shooting weddings in New York. For somebody else. Yeah. So he was doing the hard work, booking. You were the guy in King saying, wait here while he runs to Kinko's to get a contract real quick. Which, yep. that, that might be the best Dustin story ever. <laughs> And then I step out of the coffee shop into my Robin Egg two-door Cavalier. And you're just like, hey, I'm just the hired hand here. I can't afford I can't afford the Tesla. Or Teslas didn't exist back then. The BMW. But, but Kevin, if you really flip the script on this concept, the crappier the car you drive to a wedding, I will say the higher chances that you are of getting a tip at the wedding. <laughs> It's just really melegate. Show up in, you know, it's a 15, 20 year old car, just rusted out to hell. <laughs> Maybe you get out of the car, you only have one shoe on. You spend some time <laughs> looking around, you walk to the bride and groom, and you're like, I guess I forgot my other shoe. <laughs> now you're walking around, you got pants that have a hole in them, and you go, I couldn't pay to get these hemmed. <laughs> <laughs> Forget buying a new pair of pants. You couldn't even pay to get them hemmed. Uh, you didn't even have money to get your own needle and thread to hem them. Now you're going around all day. You've got a little cap out in front of you that you've put, you know, a, do- a buck fifty in, and you're just walking around taking photos. And you hold the cap out every time you take a photo to see if the people will tip you or not. What is this like a beggar slash photographer? You're busking this wedding. <laughs> It's even better. Don't bring a professional camera with you. Just bring one of the Polaroid cameras. So you take the picture, it prints out, you hold it out to the person, but then you hold out the cap. And if they don't put any money in, you pull the photo right back. And then you slowly rip it up. Right in front of them while maintaining eye contact. Like, I was just going to go get my checkbook. No. And you're like, too late. You think I have a bank account? (laughs) It's cash Shit. only, bitches. <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week on the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with Dustin and Steve. If you want to help us out, jump on iTunes or Stitcher and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover or on Twitter at Wed Pick Hangover. Dustin, my man, is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McGibbon and Steven the Steven Van Elk. If you want to get involved with the awesome community of listeners, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. But if you really want to warm our hearts, head on over to Steve and Dustin Save the World and you can sign up to support us for as little as $1 a month. Which gets you nothing except for a mention on this podcast. If you sign mm-hmm. up at the higher tiers, five dollars a month, seven fifty a month, you get all sorts of awesome bonus content. Speaking of being mentioned on the podcast this week, yeah, this week we have to thank <laughs> James of the man himself, Kelly, James, Ke- James, James Kelly. James Kelly came in. He, uh, J- 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 James came in at the ad free tier. Does why would James do this? I I do the ads, Dustin. D- You're Dustin, not doing well enough, Stephen. D- 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 James, why don't you want to hear my voice, James? Why don't Why don't you want to hear my good good ad reads, James? For, James, for a little bit more too, I'll go back and re-edit this episode so that Steve doesn't throw you under the bus. James, why would you do this to me? <laughs> James. James, do you do you not love the connection we have through the ads? I'm going to start mentioning James in all of our future ads we get. <laughs> this is James Kelly's favorite website service. It's called Squarespace. 
Big thanks to James <laughs> Kelly for Squarespace. He invented it. <laughs> but not only do we have James Kelly coming in at the seven fifty a month, the WPH ad free tier, we also have who who is it, Dustin? Uh, you begged me to read this time name. Listener, long time listener and good friend of the show, Mr. John, oh, wait for it, McManman. You forgot an A. I know. I did that on purpose. Spiced it up a bit. John McManaman came in at the Stephen Dustin Save the World $5 tier. John is getting bonus content every single week. Mm, mm, Dustin mm. and Everyone I answer bonus content. Dustin and I answer questions bonus questions every single week um and john john john's got access to that wow i've really lost it um i had we were on a train we were going on the tracks and i'm off the tracks now i'm just in the woods uh john john's getting all that good bonus content like Stephen doesn't save the world where we answer more questions from people on facebook every single week and we also include outtakes from our interview episodes the outtakes are just things that are interesting to us, but that didn't really fit into the show. If you want to be like James and John, head on over to Stephen Dustin Save the World right now, and you can you can jump on that. Uh, if you don't want to go to Stephen Dustin Save the World dot com, which is the coolest URL ever, you can just go to Patreon dot com slash WPH. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Your head is pounding. Your limbs feel like dead weight. And your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right. Next time you're editing, after you shoot another wedding. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's a good so one. So it's like currently, it's sort of like our listeners have front door access. <laughs> and by subscribing to the Patreon, it's almost like you're getting back door access to the podcast. <laughs> If you want to backdoor me and Dustin, jump on the Patreon right now. You can be like James you know what and I'm John. Saying? <laughs> James and John have purchased backdoor access to the podcast. <laughs> well, the front door is not really working right anymore. <laughs> and you need that back door. The back door is a little <laughs> bit smellier. We know. But <laughs> that's where you keep the trash, right next to the back door. But sometimes... <laughs> the only door that'll work for you in work it will personally i wouldn't want backdoor access but to each their own and we're here giving it oh man <laughs> oh my mercy all right doesn't we gotta call this one quits nope. we've been going nope. real long on this thank you so much for podcasting i saw, I, no, I saw well, aladdin you saw aladdin Did. with blue will smith <laughs> Big bluey style. Blue ball Will Smith. I mean bald. Bald Will Smith. Bald Will Smith. What yeah. I say? Blue, blue ball. Blue, you said blue ball. Blue yeah. bald Will Smith. You yep. said this is the Will Smith who will never get another sexual intercourse for the rest of his life because he's big and blue. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh gosh. Dustin, bye. No. Bye. Bye 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 bye. Bye. All right, cutting that out too. Damn. Um, You're killing it, Steve. Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs. Woo wee!